Sing it. You will know that all I need. Cause you will know. Draw me, Lord, sing it to the King. Draw me, draw me, Lord. I'm gonna run after you. I'm gonna run after you, Jesus. Draw me, draw me, draw me, Lord. And I come running after you. You alone are all I need. Cause you were alone Come on and tell him to draw me, draw me, Lord. Draw me. Come on. Draw me, Lord. And I come running after you. Come on. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. And I come running after you. Glory to God. Good morning, saints. I'd like to welcome you to another morning prayer broadcast as we continue our series, Born to Win. Are you enjoying this series as we talk about the, as we talk about David and all of what God did in David's life to bring him to the throne? Lord, have mercy. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith with your wonderful people here this morning. Dear God, your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Bring clarity in the lives of your people. Bring direction. Bring strength. Bring encouragement. Lift them up out of frustration. Remove the clouds of confusion and darkness and misunderstanding, God. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that as the word of God is taught that the works of the devil and in your people's lives would be destroyed and pulverized. Let your people get the victory on this morning. In the name of Jesus, shift the atmosphere in their lives. Shift the atmosphere in their homes, God, on their jobs. Let faith arise in their hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus, somebody say amen. Glory to God. As we continue our series, Born to Win, on this morning, we are talking about don't take matters into your own hands. There's a scripture that says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Don't think for a second, people who are mistreating you and doing you all type of awful things, don't think for a second that they're getting away. There will come a time when God himself will deal with your enemies, but you have to allow, God, you have to let God do it. Don't you take matters in your own hands. There's a scripture my mom loves to quote out of, out of the book of Psalms. The rod of the wicked will not rest on the righteous unless the righteous put forth their hands into iniquity. The only way you'll get the chastisement of the Lord or the judgment of God is if you become a wicked person or you join hands of the wicked and start doing foolishness. We're not going there. Don't take matters into your own hands. It's a great temptation to get even. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but getting even is always presenting itself. 
And you know, you got to resist that temptation. Resist the temptation to mouth off on somebody. I mean, you're on the highway and somebody cuts you off and then they want to flip you off and give you the middle finger. I mean, you got to do everything in your power not to just roll the window down and cuss them out. Come on, somebody. Can we have some real folks up here? Can we have, am I talking to some real people? And, and, and a few times I even, I didn't cuss them out now, but I did mouth off a few things and the Holy Ghost said, well, well, what, what's going on with you, Mr. Preacher? And th- then you got to repent real fast. Come on, man. You, a whole lot of folk are laughing. <laughs> a whole lot of you are laughing because you're guilty. Come on. I want to talk to some real Christians this morning. Don't take matters into your own hands. Don't do it. And I'm telling you, I feel the temptation strong this morning. There is a group of you that's listening to me this morning. You are being tempted. You are being tempted out of your wit's end to take matters into your own hands, to get revenge. Don't do it. Let God do it. Let God handle it. This brings us to 1 Samuel chapter 24 because David's on the run from King Saul. We, We saw yesterday how God gave David a tremendous victory for the people of Keilah. And yet the people of Keilah was, was, would still be willing to betray David and hand him over to Saul. It, it just, it blows my mind. This is, people are people, I'm telling you. This is why you gotta put your trust in God. People will turn on you on a dime. My mom and dad would always say, people change, son but God never changes. Whole to God's unchanging hand. Can someone lift your hands to heaven and declare it this morning? I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hands. Praise be to God. This brings us into 1 Samuel chapter 24, beginning at verse 1 through 22. The Bible says, after Saul returned from fighting the Philistines, he was told, that David had gone into the wilderness of En Gedi. So Saul chose 3,000 elite troops from all Israel and went to search for David and his men near the rocks of the wild goats. At the place where the road passes some sheepfolds, Saul went into a cave to relieve himself. He went to use the bathroom. But as it happened, David and his men were hiding farther back in that very cave. Wow. Think about this. King Saul, the one who's, who's got 3,000 elite troops, the best of the best, on the hunt to kill David. But Saul needs to take a bathroom break. And he goes into a cave, and David and his men are hiding farther back in the cave. Well, I know what I'd have been struggling with. I'd have been wanting to give him, like we say, <laughs> like we say in the Bahamas, I want to give him his things. Give him his things, man. You know what I'm saying? That means knock him upside the head, do something crazy to him, right? Watch this. What? Listen to David's men. Now's your opportunity, David's men whispered to him, today. The Lord is telling you. It's all of a sudden his men are prophets. <laughs> the flesh is something else. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. So David is being tempted. His men are saying, yea, thus say, all of a sudden they are prophets. They say, this is the day we've been waiting on for you to cut this rascal down. It's, it's your time, David. I mean, it can't get no more plainer than this. His back is turned. He's sitting there on the party. He, 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 he ain't going to even know what hit him. Just let it, just take him out, cut his throat, stab him, do something. David's men are saying, this is our moment. And, and let's, let's, let's slow down. Let's think about this for a second. These men, their feelings were hurt. They had, they, David was good to them. He was their leader now. And yet this demon-possessed king, backslidden person, 
is one to ravage David and kill David and made all of their lives miserable. They are just running everywhere. They just, they every place they can run and hide in the jungle, they're doing it to get away from Saul. So to think that they now have an opportunity to get rid of this person who's causing them such misery. Let, let's, let's look at, let's face reality. I am telling you, I'd have been, I would have been tempted Tit, come on, somebody. I mean, they'd have been holding me back. Come on. I mean, some of you are laughing. Some of you, some of you are laughing. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of you are like, well, Pastor, I'd have been and took him now a long time. I, I know what some of you are thinking. You, you know why I like to talk to God's people like this? Because we got to be real. We got to quit being phonies in the church. Listen, you're not in your glorified body yet. You struggle. I don't care who you are. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how much you speak with tongues. I don't care how much you fast and pray. You still struggle. There's stuff we got to struggle with. I would have been tempted to lay him clean. I mean, I would have been tempted to take him out of here. Think about it. You know? So, so this was a real temptation. Watch this. And so David went and cut a piece of salt. He, he didn't intend to go cut his clothes. He went to go kill him. But David got convicted. The Bible says in verse 5, but then David's conscience began bothering him. The Bible says in the King James, his heart smote him. That's the conviction of the Holy Ghost. But then David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's robe. He said to the men, the Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord, the King. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one, for the Lord himself has chosen him. Wow. Yeah, he's backslidden, but he's still God's chosen. He's still God's anointed. It's not my job to cut him down. The anointing cannot fight the anointing. Are you listening to me? He was God's chosen. He had been anointed with holy oil. He had been set apart for the work of God. It's not your job to cut him down. It's God's job. Watch this. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul. After Saul had left the cave and gone on his way, David came out and shouted after him, My Lord the King. And when Saul looked around, David bowed low before him. Then he shouted to Saul, why do you wish to listen to the people who say, I am trying to harm you? This very day, you can see with your own eyes, it isn't true. For the Lord placed you at my mercy back there in the cave. Some of my men told me to kill you, but I spared you. For I said, I will never harm the king. He is the Lord's anointed one. Look, my father, at what I have in my hand. It is a piece of the hem of your robe. I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you have been hunting for me to kill me. May the Lord judge between us. Perhaps the Lord will punish you for what you are trying to do to me, but I will never harm you. As the old proverb says, from evil people come evil deeds, so you can be sure I will never harm you. Wow. Who is the king of Israel trying to catch anyway? Should he spend his time chasing one who is as worthless as a dead dog or a single flea? May the Lord therefore judge which of us is right and punish the guilty one. He is my advocate and he will rescue me from your power. Someone lift your hands to heaven and say, this is God's fight. Come on, this is God's fight. God is going to do what's right. He's going to rescue me. He's going to rescue me from the power of the enemy. When David had finished speaking, Saul called back. Is that really you, my son, David? Then he began to cry. Saul began to cry. He felt bad. He knew he was wrong. And he said to David, you are a better man than I am. That's exactly what God said. I'm going to give the kingdom to a neighbor who is better. You are a better man than I am, for you have repaid me good for evil. Yes, you have been amazingly kind to me today. For when the Lord put me in a place 
where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would let his enemy get away when he had him in his power? May the Lord reward you well for the kindness you have shown me today. And now I realize that you are surely going to, to be king and that the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. Now swear to me by the Lord that when that happens, you will not kill my family and destroy my line of descendants. So David promised this to Saul with an oath. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went back to their stronghold. Lord have mercy. Don't take matters into your own hands. Don't do it, saints. It's a great temptation to get even with people and to straighten people out and to tell them off and to let them have a piece of your mind. But that's not the way to go, saints. We are children of God. We are full of the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to display the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, kindness. Are you listening to me? Gentleness, patience. Come on, saints. Don't take matters into your own hands. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let God fight your battle. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, me and Pastor Amy, we lift your wonderful people up before you who are being tempted out of their wit's end to get even with their enemies, to pay evil, to repay evil for evil. You told us in your word, we must overcome evil with good. We forgive them. Come on, call that person name. Call the name. Type it below this video if it will help you. Come on, I want, I want your comments. Let those folks go. Forgive them. Forgive them. We forgive them. They have hurt us. They have wounded us deeply. But we forgive them, God. We place them in your hands. You fix it, God. For you said in your word, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. I thank you, God, for hearing our prayer this morning, giving your people victory because we are born to win in the name of Jesus. Amen. To stand with us to support the preaching of the gospel, visit us online, seanpinder.net forward slash give. If you have our ministry app on our phone, you can also give through our ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy. We love you. We appreciate you so much. And we ask you, share this video with at least five of your friends that you know need a word of encouragement. Share it, share it through WhatsApp, Snapchat, LinkedIn, TikTok, however you can share this video. Help us get this message around the world. We love you. God bless you. Look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.